You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club, and she's back. She yes, our back. girl Issa Rae is here. Issa Rae, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. Charlamagne's oh, in the back. bathroom, but he'll run in in the middle. Okay, all good. I, I know that life. It's a number two, probably. <laughs> number two. I got so. <laughs> why, why you do that? Take a little bit, a little number two. I got bladder problems, so I get it. And he takes all his clothes off when he goes to the bathroom, so. My friend does that? It's weird. And he's a dude, and I didn't understand that. I was like, you really take all your, he was like, I need to take all my clothes off. <laughs> And I was like, what if it's like a public restaurant? I do that at home, not in a public place. He doesn't do it in a public restaurant. Okay. I clarified oh, he does. that. does it here. Yeah, like, we this actually so. take pictures while oh, he's in the he bathroom. Is. So you was doing number two? That's what they nah, said. I, I do number two at 8.30. <laughs> I do number two at 8.30. Uh, okay. But we are know. ready for Insecure. It's back on Sunday. Yeah. No, we not. Because ain't no Lawrence this season, huh? You just don't give a damn about, about us ashy niggas. Yes. Okay, you going to take all the ashy nigga representation <laughs> off you TV? Using why, why Lawrence not going to be on, Issa? How many times do you talk to your ex exes like a day? Zero. How many times? Okay. I'm married. And that's so why. Exes. So that's her ex. Why would she talk to her ex? You know what? Well, you I just want to sex for the life. Because, you know, all along, right, when you first cheated, I was like, she's going to end up with this dude. With Daniel? Yeah. Or? I kind of thought that. And I know he's going to be all on this next season. So. I kind of liked him better for you. I don't know why. Well, we'll see this season. Except you know, for when he, you thought he disrespected you when he busted in your face. But She was going through a lot. She was, you know, she was going through a lot. And she, that was like the straw that broke the camel's back, you mm -hmm. know, for her. <laughs> so. I saw him at the airport. I, 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 you saw I, a lot? Yes. And I, I kind of was like angry at him. And then I realized like Daniel's just a character. Just and, I, and I realized, you know what I'm saying? I realized I met him before. <laughs> When we did, what was that show Prentice did? The Hustle oh, back the in the day? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a great guy. And I, was I love like, him. You know, I know he probably felt like I was being a little cold to him, but I was like, nah. Y'all you know, made just, eye contact and we you talked, We spoke, oh, and I was spoke. like, like, oh, my bad, Daniel. I, you know, you're not Daniel. But why were you? Why would you crazy. be mad at him? I, I just feel like Daniel broke, had broke up a happy home. That's, that's I want you with Lawrence. Would you you want that? No, because you said you want me to suffer, so I don't I even do know that you want. Season. Just one more season, then y'all get back together season four, have babies and stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's what you want? Yeah. <laughs> good to know. I think it's good to move on. That relationship would clearly ran its course, and that happens in life sometimes. You know, I've definitely, this is like based off of certain events, you know, so I just want to depict them how, how they went. Do you believe in going back in a relationship? I've gone back. Do I believe in it? I don't know. I think it just depends on the person. I'm very forgiving. I don't. I never forget, but I forgive. So if if it, it feels like we both matured and we're both acknowledging things, because I don't like holding on to stuff. Mm -hmm. I need to put it all out there. And mm -hmm. If we talk about it, then you know the possibilities are endless. At That's what point did you learn forgiveness? Because I really think I just mm -hmm. learned that concept. I it's never just, used to believe in forgiveness. I know you still don't believe no, in it. You always say I did, that I did. You I didn't believe. tell y'all that, but I had a breakthrough this weekend when I was sitting on my grandma's porch. I did. I did. And, and, and in therapy, we I had a breakthrough. Because I, I always talk I'm about serious. forgiveness. We just talk about giving somebody you don't back believe in it. A couple days ago. I know, but I prayed for that person. I did. No, I did. I swear, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I had to get that anger and resentment because I never felt that way towards a person where I really, really, really wanted to hurt them in a in a way. So I was like, I had I got to let that go. It's that energy though. Like I think that's just like holding on to like anger and just resentment is is taxing and I think for me it's just like I'd rather let that go mm -hmm. if you got the issue fine but for me it's just like I would rather release and keep it pushing because I don't like to stay mad at people I don't That's like real. to be upset I would just rather just you know like are we cool we talked about it cool let's keep it pushing right. and you also have to remember Charlamagne forgives but the goons don't so oh my God, what they do it. has nothing to do with me that's forgiveness facts. is like I say is always more for yourself because to not have like it's you said it's, yeah it is taxing on yourself to be angry and have these feelings towards someone else who wants to walk around feeling like that I know mm -hmm. but I don't want to forgive like I, I always will remember I, I'm not that's I'm not forgive not forget but I'm yeah. not I'm not praying on it's not I think about it all the time but I just don't fuck with you that's you know. that's fine that's not that's, I, but you can still forgive the act and be like okay we're good we can separate now, spoiler alert, I did um, get to see the first episode because they sent us yeah, the screener. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I was out all day. I was exhausted, but I came home. I was tired, but I said I got to stay up because I am watching this first screener because I was so excited for it, and it does not disappoint. I was really excited to see where Issa's character is going okay. and to see the job. You Actually, the side job that you have made me want to do that. Uh, I, I want to do that job in real life. I tried to do that Let me not. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away, but it, there's a side this. job, and I was like, you made it look like so appealing. <laughs> How are you gonna so talk about it fun. but not talk about it? No, I, I thought respect you were talking that. about a guy at first. I was like, that's a new name for side side names now. Side job. Side like, jobs. Oh. It should be. It is a job. <laughs> 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 I want to talk about it because I think it's so interesting. 
Well, don't talk about it, Angela. Okay, I don't okay, want that okay. out there yet. Sunday, right, you'll find out what week. she's talking about. Uh, adulting, they say, is a theme explored in season three. Yeah, it's like about knowing better, doing better. You know, that's like um, one of the key things of adulting. It's like, you know, nobody's going to forgive you. Nobody's going to make excuses for you. After you pass, like, your 20s, people are like, she should know better. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And she needs to do better. Mm-hmm. And there's... Like after some point when you when you make mistakes, you need to learn the lessons from those mistakes. And our characters make some decisions and now it's about like watching them not kind of double back. But can How you- is adulting for Issa Rae in real life though? Cause Definitely. like you like a mogul now, celebrities, writing, like. Cover I, Ebony and okay, <laughs> I, else happen. Thank you. I, I still make lots of mistakes, but I feel like I, I know who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's part of adulting is just like not shifting yourself for somebody else. Like, you know, mm-hmm. when you come into your own, you're just like, this is who I am. And now I need to make that work for me. So, um, but do people allow you to grow? Because, you know, as a kid, they, we didn't have social media, so it, we could grow. If we messed up, we messed up. It was over. But now it's like, you know, they'll pull up an old interview you did seven years ago and be like, you remember when you said that? That's that's really the thing about the Internet. Like everything lives forever. And I feel like, yeah, there is a culture of just like holding people to a certain time period in their lives, which I feel like is is harmful because, you know, that social media is so public in terms of like what you put out there at the time. Like I, I think about a time I had a job. And I, I think about, like, I used to read articles all the time where people would be like, oh, I complained about my job on Twitter and they got fired. And I'd be like, how stupid are you? Right. And then I was going through my old tweets and I did the same you shit. You complained about and your I job? And I added my job. I was like, oh, I'm put, I was like, oh, I'm so tired what working here, this? blah, blah. It was at a museum, like, <laughs> just got hired. They don't even. And I was like, talking about it. And I was like, you know, 25, 26. And I was like, how stupid could you? I would right. never do that now. But there was just something in that you feel like it's contained, like it's a bubble. And. Um, I don't know. I, I think it is unfair to hold you to that. You just have, but then it's also unnatural to just have a timeline of your life mm-hmm. on a platform with no context. Mm-hmm. That's and, why you got to delete the tweets. I was just talking to Ray J about that. And it's good that when you look back on stuff and it makes you feel uncomfortable because that lets you know that you've grown from that. A hundred percent. Because I cringe at a bunch of stuff that I used to say. But that's why I have a journal. Like I have yeah. a journal where I look back and I'm like, ooh. And I rarely look back. Sometimes I just don't look back. But yeah, I've definitely like, my timeline now is just like, what it like uh things that i'm proud of or thoughts that i've had that i feel like dictate what i'm doing now but yeah i cleanse all the time i think it's good to purge thoughts and it's just again it's so unnatural for people to have access to the thoughts that you had and hold you accountable today when you know there's no context even last time when you were here we talked about your book and you were like i wrote that so long ago yeah like now you look at it and, and you don't even want people to look at that book as who you are now yeah but i also get why people do because if they buy it today they're like oh this is her but you know, it, it's just you don't think about how books live forever. Age. Live forever. Well, let's, well, let's read a passage from your book. Oh, while don't oh we. my God! <clears throat> <laughs> this is why I propose that Black women and Asian men join forces in love, marriage, and procreation. That's my Educated parents. Black women, what better intellectual match for you than an Asian man? And I'm not talking about Filipinos. They're like. The niggers of Asian. Whoa, 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 whoa! Well, blacks of Asian. I'm why sorry. Why do you say niggers? I, er. Oh, blacks of Asian. What? Okay. That's blacks of Asian. Do you still stand by that? Um, <laughs> that's my parents. By this the way. My is so dad ridiculous. Is Chinese, my mom's. It black. didn't bother me when I read your the book. Dad is Chinese, your mom's black. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at you, an embodiment of that. When I read the book a year ago, it didn't bother me at all. Then I saw it come back early this year, and I was like, "Why are they mad about this?" It was so interesting. Like that, I wasn't even on social media at the time when that came out. Wale, of all people, was like, "Yo, I saw you trending. I thought Insecure the trailer drop." Like, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm not even going to look." And then you know, I started my publicist hit me, blah blah. <laughs> And it was so strange that that, like, you know, I wrote that in 2010, you know? And that was the context of, like, Steve Harvey coming out and all these news things like, black women have no hope. Educate black women, there's no chance for you. (laughs) Nobody, yes, black men. So satirically, sarcastically, I was, like, you know, reading a lot and noticed that there was just an abundance and surplus of... <laughs> in Asia, a lot of... Um, when families, they all can have one kid. Yes. And they would always have a boy and they would throw the They would the throw away, away the girl. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, there's an abundance here. So, like, yeah. there we go. There's your solution, black women. Hey, go nobody... China and find Niggas don't want you. Go. Yeah. <laughs> go get one. And it was a joke and blah, blah. And then I thought I was genius at the time. And then when my when it came time to write my book, that was a blog post. When it tam- came time to write my book... Um, that was coming up again on dating apps that like black women and Asian men were at were the lowest um, had the lowest chance of matching with other people. And so I was like, this is what I said in 2010. Look at me. I'm, I'm going to put it in the book. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and of course it was a joke, but I was like, for this to come up. And this is my this is yeah, my drug. Yeah. This is what I'm getting dragged for. And I've never even <laughs> I've never even dated outside my race. I was like, I stay loyal to these ashy niggas all my life. <laughs> I was like, can I put my pussy on back page? Like, see if I get any hits. Like, let me try to see if I can, if I can get a hit because this is ridiculous. This fucking dudes are like, I don't even cheat, and I might as well cheat because you think I am. But it was just it was just a lot at the time. It's so funny because I completely understood it because of my situation, like I said, because my dad is Chinese, my mom's black, so I got the joke, and I understood why you were saying it, but, you know, I it guess is. the majority I mean, of people didn't. Just because I know the, what the, there's all these men in China that can't find women, and then here. All approved me. But it was just, it was still just a sarcastic right, thing, and if you read the chapter before, then that's the thing. Like, people read headlines, captions, and pictures all mm-hmm. day, and they think that they know, they know the entire story. And it's like, if you read the chapter before, you just, <laughs> You'd see where that came from. I mean, I hate to. I can't. The whole tone of the whole book is explain funny. things to people, and that was, and that also felt like it was just beyond me. Like I was like, that this has nothing to do with me. People project a lot, and they want you to be this certain thing that they think you are, and it, and as soon as you show a glimpse that they fit what you think they are, they're like, ah, I got it. I knew that. Yep. I knew that bitch. Ooh, mm-hmm. I knew. So. And then I felt bad too because I was like, you know what? Some black people really don't read. <laughs> I'm not, I'm like this book was out for so long. Like, it, is, it, is. it was then, my first book in my book club. But um, I use a thank you for that too. Yeah. Did it um, make more Asian men holler at you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I also I wouldn't know. Damn. But no, I wasn't walking down the street and people were like, "Hey, my." Actually, never mind. Not even come on, tell me. Tell us. Don't get in more trouble. Tell us. It just clicked. What happened? There was heavy. There was at the time someone heavy who was just like you know, you know, flirtatious, Mm -hmm. and I didn't put two and two together. I was like, wow, all of a sudden, and you just made me realize maybe that was it. Maybe he was like, oh, he read that passage. He was Filipino, Asian. What was he? Um, Probably not Filipino because I don't think they were like. (laughs) Do we know him? First of all, also Filipinos. If you take black. As an offense, like that's that's on you. Stop, stop. That is true. That's it's the way you worded it though. Way. I can see why they would say that. The, the blacks are the Asians. Now what let's get back mean? to insecure because the trailer is out. <laughs> the compliment. So, so the compliment. Two minutes. She got to go do okay, TV. No, nah, so. I love you. Let's do this because the trailer is out, so I could talk about this. Okay, so you okay. are living at Daniel's house, mm-hmm. right? And so, how does that mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. end up mm-hmm. happening? Mm-hmm in this season because y'all are not together mm-hmm. but she didn't want to stay with her brother and there's also something because again based on real events and no I never lived with like an ex but I have stayed with one and it was when I when I needed to but you also just find an excuse of mm-hmm. just like being around I want to be around you and I can't explain why and this opportunity is available and I just really want to explore but I also don't want to tell you that and let me just see what's up so that's how it happened so let me make myself vulnerable. Let me and tell you, let me lay the rules because she comes and she says, look, I'm sleeping on the couch. That's it. So That's where it starts. That's where it starts. That's Next thing you know, you're in the bed. Then you're wearing his T-shirt. Then you're wearing his you know T-shirt. What I'm saying? Yep. Then y'all having unprotected then sex. Then y'all cooking. Yep. Now you're yeah. pregnant. Protect you know what I'm saying? Now Lawrence like, damn, see? I knew it all along that he was. she was in love with him. Who do you think has more uh, big dick energy? What? What would you say? This is an excellent question. What are you doing? Lawrence, Sorry, finish it. Lawrence or Daniel from the outside looking. She was going to answer before he answered. <laughs> who has more big dick energy? Who That's has been a, a big more topic. big dick energy between Lawrence and Daniel? Mm-hmm. I think Daniel does. Mm-hmm. In was, real life, are you attracted to big dick energy? Well, hold on, Charlotte. What the fuck is big dick energy? Who do you think has big dick? They don't know. I don't know what that is. Clearly, don't know what we're talking about. I've tell y'all all the time. I have a very average size penis, so I I have no idea what that is. You have all the energy. What is that? What is big dick energy? Seriously, what is that? What is that? What she said? FDE. She said you got S D E. A D E. That sounds terrible. A D E. Average. What's small? What's big? Like an ego? You know how you just walk and you like, you know, you just walk with a certain confidence. No. You have like. I don't know. <laughs> for guys, guys, <laughs> it's a real thing for women. We could tell the size of your dick by the way that you carry yourself. Really? That ain't yeah. true. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to say. All the women in the room are like, yes, I don't know if Chuck got anything to do with it, bro. <laughs> that ain't what I need to be poking out. There's a nonchalance. There's a nonchalance about life. There's a certain nonchalance that you have when you're walking, mm-hmm. when, you, when, you're carrying, you know? wow. yeah, when you're walking, when you when you're carrying. Wow. There is. There's just you don't really sweat stuff. I don't know. It's kind of like when you got your gun on you. What? 
When you got your gun on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats on the Ebony magazine cover, though. Thank right, the Ebony you. magazine. You yeah, look incredible. You, you don't you don't carry yourself like the awkward black girl at all anymore. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. I mean, you never did to me anyway. But I'm saying I don't it's see it at up. all. It's the glow. Up? Yeah, that's the glow up of the. Even Molly glowed up. Everybody like <laughs> just on the actual show. Yeah, her, thank you. you. Know, being able to date and have options. Can even we bask in the glow of her option. Ebony magazine cover before we jump back to Insecure? No, I love it. I love connecting it back to Insecure. And yeah. shout out to Yvonne Orji, who's just been, you know, such a rock and such a talent and such a force. Like she glowing up too. Own. Yes, in every single way. And I can't imagine doing the show with anybody else. She's such a positive light of energy, and she. She glued the fuck up, too. Mm-hmm. And she got a man now in real life, which is real cute. I'm happy about that for her. Love him. Love them. He supports her, which is all you can ask for. He gets it. He mm-hmm. saw Insecure. What? Oh, well, he saw Insecure for the first time during the... Well, no. He hadn't seen Insecure before they hooked up. And then, you know, he was at the premiere. And, you know, the first episode was kind of racy. So yeah. it was a lot for him to deal with. But oh. I'll wait for her to come on. I'm telling her business. So, yeah. Sorry, girl. Do you still feel like the uh, awkward outsider? An like outsider? The- no, because I'm like, I demand to be in. And there's so many like of my peers around mm-hmm. me where I'm just excited to be amongst them. You know, I don't feel like an outsider. I just feel like, what's next? I feel anxious and I feel so excited to be able to do stuff and create the next thing. Because you're like, you're, you are the party now. Like, it's not like you used to say, you used to go to the parties and kind of just like hang out. But now it's like, Issa is one of the lives of the party. Now. Not the life of the party, but I I throw a good party. I'll still be in the background of the party, like looking at people dance, like get it, get it, get it, hyping people <laughs> up. But you your, know, it's your, just your red cup kick, kickbacks be lit. My my little kickbacks. Yes, I'm having another kickback. Um, I'm having a yacht party soon. Just a yacht, yacht party. party. Whoa. I like good parties, well, and I had one last year that because I just like randomly tweeted like I want to do yacht shit, and then I was like, can I do yacht shit? And I had one and just invited a bunch of my friends and that was great. And it was right before the the season premiere of, of, of two, Insecure Two. And so this year is just gonna be a little bit later because I have no weekends left. But I just wanna ha- have fun. Like what's the point of, of doing this if you can't have fun with your friends? Why do I feel like you talk to your accountant just like that? I wanna do yacht shit. <laughs> can I do yacht? <laughs> can I do yacht? Oh, I can't. I feel like somebody Uh-oh. would let her borrow a, a good... yacht now at this point. Like No, I wish. If you know no, anybody like, that would, I, I still actually, gotta pay for okay. the shit. Yeah. All right. You yeah. know somebody that can let me borrow a yacht? I actually do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you never did no yacht shit, you <laughs> in LA? Oh no, be in Miami. Oh, okay. Well, I might have to do, move Yasha to Miami. <laughs> but um, question for you. In real life, somebody calls up here, right, for advice, and she just got out of a 10-year relationship, so she's now dating two guys at once, and now her ex is calling her a hoe because she's sleeping with both of them. Now, what kind of advice would you give a young lady like that who, out of a 10-year relationship, her ex cheated on her with her best friend, and now she's dating and sleeping with two guys? What would you say? Because she's feeling insecure that her man is calling her, her ex, it's calling her, oh, they have kids together. She still has to see them. Why, is she, why does her ex know that, though? Is she he went calling to her, her? Why does he have access to her phone? She they still have kids, and I guess, you know. Oh, they have kids. You mm-hmm. left that part out. I know we only got easy way for five more Could minutes. you shut up? I'm just I want to hear her Gosh. Um, who cares what he thinks? Mm-hmm. Live your life. He cheated on you. It's your best friend. He don't give a fuck about you. Move on. He's trash. That's all I can say. Right. Sorry, kids. Your daddy's trash. <laughs> Your daddy's trash. <laughs> did you hang out with any gang members growing up in LA? <laughs> what yeah, kind of question is that? I did. Remember YG, YG was, was here talking yesterday about and YG it. was oh, talking about you. Yeah. YG was talking about me? Yeah, he was like, yo, I asked he, him if he like, yo, insecure. Shorty that, shorty that right to show, you know what I'm saying? She from the crib, from the brib, you know what I mean? That's a, that's and, a, yeah. and she, you know, so she know the gang culture, you know she what I'm saying? She know how to connect to is, the internet. Is that how he's on it? Yeah, <laughs> I am. And I was like, did, she got so he just made right? my day. I was like, did Issa hang out? I mean, with you? I don't. I'm neutral. No, I went to school. You know, I went to school in Compton, and it was just like a diverse um, group of black people. And yeah, there were some people that banged, and you know, it was just like that was like that the, was when a culture. white person asked you about black people in the hood. Like, have you ever met a gang member? Didn't <laughs> I, that sound like that? I didn't say met. I said hang out. I'm sure she met. But one of the people that I uh, was in insecure when I had to, when I knew that I wanted to do like the blood walk scene. I went to high school with mm-hmm. dude. And he was the only person I knew who knew how to blood walk. Like we went to, we dick school one day, went to the homie's house and had a party. And I remember Mac 10's do the damn thing, do the hey. damn thing came on. And he was just like, you know, and I'm 15, 16, I'm mesmerized. I'm like, I've never seen people blood walk before. 
And so when it t- came time to write an episode for someone to blood walk, I was like, I know exactly who I'm going to call. I'm going to call Brandon. And he showed up. I hit him up on Facebook like, hey, do you still know how to blood walk? And he was like, yeah, and came through. Do the gang members get mad about your depiction, the way you depict them on Insecure? Um, they haven't attacked me like they've attacked Cardi in any way. No. <laughs> I, 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 I feels like they ain't hit you up to extort you yet. Nothing. They have not. They haven't complained. They haven't sent a formal complaint. They haven't added me, so I feel okay. And you see, YG gave it his stamp. He said he, he watched. Did. I'm after. just finding yeah, that out. Did. I'm yeah, so short, grateful. They showed it from the bread. That's that's <laughs> it. From the he said the bread. He did not say bread. Shut up. You getting my hopes up right now. Now I gotta watch the interview. You just wrapped a movie too, right? Yes, yesterday. Yeah, I was, I'm very hype. I had a little champagne before I came here just to celebrate because I was like, it just doesn't make sense that I'm going straight from a movie to doing interviews. So I Why not? You're a star. Well, what movie? It's a movie called Little. It's a Will Packer movie that Marseille Martin, mm-hmm. who plays Diane on Blackish, yep. she picked when she was 10 years old. Wow, that's amazing. And it is getting made now. Uh, wow. We just finished out shooting with Regina Hall, who's my favorite, and she just finished it. And it's, you filmed like it in Atlanta, based- right? I filmed it in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's based off of... Big. Well, it's like, yeah, it's a it's totally different, but yeah, the inspiration came from Big. It's like the opposite of Big. Uh, Big's one of my favorite movies ever. I used to watch that like every day as a kid. I still watch it now. You wanted it's that piano, movie. right? I wanted that big piano, yeah, no. yes. And then I, I went to the toy store and got to play it, and then now now that toy store is closed gone, down, right? Yeah, they closed it down. That's a tragedy. And what about this film with uh that, that, that's that been rumored for so long with Ava and Issa oh, and so Rihanna and Lupita? <laughs> Cause I'm hearing it's happening. That's a discreet saying. That's what YG told me. Why you told you that? <laughs> Stop making up stuff that YG said. <laughs> God. It's in production. It's, it's in production. Be production. Yeah, Definitely not in production. You know. But I have another movie coming out. Okay. It's called The Hate You Give, based off of Angie Thomas's book. Um, it's coming out in October, starring Amanda Amanda Stanberg, Stanberg, and it's um Regina Hall's in that one as well. And I'm basically I've done two movies so far, and Regina's been in both of them. So I want to be in every movie she's in. I'm gonna pull up and be like, "What are we doing next?" Oh, they had the screening for that at Essence Fest. I the screening was there, right? I still haven't seen the movie yet. I know oh. we're doing we're premiering world premiere will be in Toronto Film Festival, but I know they were there for it. She was on my flight. That's why I was who was Regina, Regina Hall talking <laughs> shit? No, she was. <laughs> it was early, <laughs> but okay. listen, we know you got to go. But Insecure is coming on on every single Sunday. Yes. It debuts this Sunday, and I promise you, because I already, of course, stayed up late to watch the first yes. episode. The screener is so good. It's so exciting, and you're gonna remember when I said the job that she has on there. You're gonna wish you had that job. It made me really feel like I should try to apply. You for should. This. You should. In real life. And, and a sip. We don't, us oh, us interviewers sip. don't have to worry about anything, right? That's just a little hobby for you, right? It's a hobby. What do you mean you have to worry? Y'all do this. I don't. This is just an excuse for me to drink alcohol and get, you know. We got some cases for you right here if you need. <laughs> Why don't y'all ever have drinks in this? We like, do. I feel like y'all should pour. No, I feel like. Why killer with us yesterday? Why she was? But y'all don't ever offer, like, up front. You got Remy, what you need. You never offer up front. I like sparkling beverages. No, but you didn't pour. I don't want also don't want to be the. I don't want to be the only one. I'm already going to do that after this. I was already going to do that anyway, baby, because that's just who I am. We got Hennessy. We got tequila. What do you like to drink? We got got (laughs) I'm going to just take it. Can I take a case? Yes, you can take a case. What? You guys are so hospitable. (laughs) You should be called the hospitable club, because that's what what y'all are. Hospitable blub. All right? Don't you disrespect that red dress you got on. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's the Breakfast Club. It's Issa Rae. 